That's right. And then a round of applause, please, for both of our films. That's the no speakers. Yuri Tchaikovsky from He Who Mented All This and Marlene Erdogan, The Figure of Our Men. And I'd like to invite them to the stage. I'm inside. Yes, we're going to have a time Thank you. Here. Thank you. So, of course, we, we welcome your questions. Um, please, please, uh, if you have them. But I'd like to start um, the first question. First of all, Yuri, we've done an interview. We've already done an interview together, as you know. But can you please tell me about how this story came to be? It's a personal biography, in, in a sense. Да, я благодарю тебя, Алекс. Я благодарю всех организаторов международного кинофестиваля Авто. Я счастлив быть здесь в Калифорнии, в Лос-Анджелесе, и сказать, что этому прекрасному солнечному городу я привез немножко тифлистского солнца. Я обладаю вот такой же группой количества крови, которые огромном количестве находится внутри моего сердца. Это очень похоже на Лос-Анджелес, в котором можно встретить армян, грузин, евреев, азербайджанцев и всех тех англоязычных людей, которые стали американцами. But he was living in Russia, so he won't say that the yes, like я хочу что я хочу сказать тем, кто понимает по-русски, огромное спасибо, потому что это на мой взгляд начало любого кинорежиссера такому маленького кино, в котором заложено все то солнце, вся та любовь все то, что мне передали мои родители, это память о маме, которую звали Муза, и это реально так, и папу звали Аликов. И э, они да, подарили мне самое главное, они мне подарили способность любить и дарить эту любовь людям. В общем, то, что я и делаю с помощью любимого инструмента кино. So everything you saw in the movie is about him and about Allah and God. Thank you. Okay, well, we're going to ask questions, but of course, I'd like to also ask the same question to you, Marvin, which is, I saw the um, great amount of people that were involved in making this film. What was the genesis of it? How did it come to be? How did you find your financing? Okay. Um, well, um, it's basically throughout the years, every time I ever, my first trip was in 19, uh, in the early 90s, uh, late 90s, excuse me. And since then, I was going to uh, Yerevan and visiting the villages. And throughout every trip, I, I realized that there were there was a lot of changes happening in the country. Uh, the capital was changing a lot, but there was also something sinister happening in the villages because um, every time I went, there was less and less people. Uh, uh, living in the villages, so I thought, okay, there's something happening here that needs to be documented. So it was, uh, the genesis came mostly uh, out of a necessity on my part, thinking, okay, I need to go back, uh, not to, for my own personal reasons, to discover the country and my, get closer to my identity, but to document these changes. Why are Armenian villages being depopulated, and why are people, its public, um, citizens, resorting to uh, mass migration rather than uh, staying and, and building a better future? Now that Armenia has celebrated, you know, 20, 22 years of uh, independence, so it, it came from a, a, a personal place of concern. And how many years? How many years was this? Uh, the pre-production and the production. Um, I went back. Uh, uh, Research was pre-research, pre-development was in 2008, um, but I went back in 2010. So basically, I researched it for a whole year and then um, putting money together and then going back with a small team. Basically, I I, I made I wanted to take uh, local use local crews, so my camera person and uh, I did sound, and I actually did uh, half the uh, filming myself. Um, so, yeah, it was a very small team, but local. It was essential for the film because I think in order to capture something that is not only, I mean, I, I had done my research, but I, I wanted the people who were documenting to be from there so that it was an honest 
a depiction of, of the reality. Yeah. Well, we, of course, love to hear from you, audience members, if you have any questions. The question was, when Marlene went to the villages, did anybody hesitate to share their stories? And how did you persuade people to be honest and forthright? Because they were incredibly honest open with you. And honest. Open. Yeah. Uh, on the contrary, um, I think people, my aim was to give voice to the, to the voices we normally don't hear. Um, uh, and on the contrary, they're very, very open. That, that there was this uh, need, I think, for people to vent out and to express about their lives and, and what, about their realities. So no, on the, I, I didn't need any, persuade, any persuasion, to, I, mean, I didn't need to persuade anybody because they were just open and, and, and waiting and they took us in. I mean, it looks like it's done as uh, chance encounters, but um, a lot of these people, we just didn't spend an hour, we spent a whole entire day, sometimes two days, staying with them and, and capturing their daily lives. Some things happened instantaneously, like that old woman who was talking uh, and complaining about her pension. Um, yes, yes. But otherwise, most people uh, who would stay with them, talk to them, and they were very hospitable. They would open up their homes and their lifestyles. How many hours of footage did you have in the end? Um, altogether, I think I had around 40 hours. Wow. Yeah. The question was, how did she have a, a, a dialogue with women when men were present, because when men are present, they obviously take the lead. Um, I, obviously, I'm sorry, in, yes. in Armenia, they just, the <laughs> patriarchal society takes over, right? That wasn't my impression at all, actually. I, I didn't feel like the men were taking over. On the contrary, there's a lot of space for women. Um, the only instance that I kind of felt that was uh, in the beginning of the film, when you see that couple on the farm, um, and that's why I had the need. In the beginning, he kind of wanted to speak for his wife and then invited her into the picture, into the frame. Um, that's why I decided to go and film with her alone because that's the only instance where I felt like he was trying to speak for her because she had a very difficult life. She, she would get maybe four, hour, uh, four hours of sleep and then she would do most of the work. So in the house, outside to, to milk the cows and whatnot. So, um, and that's the only instance I felt like um, I needed to go and interview her on her own. And that's when I could really pull the family secrets out, which I didn't even have to pull. She was so readily oh, and, and honest about that it. That has been my experience too when I traveled in villages in Armenia, how open hearted uh, the humanity of the people. It just it strikes you, and it's something that uh, being from a big city like this, you just are not in touch with that. With, another person, but in the villages, you're struck by it yeah. head on. Uh, I want to ask... I, can oh, I just add yeah. one thing, actually? Um, the people are very eloquent, too. Yes. And they, 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 they converse very well. And that's what I think is a shocking contrast. Um, you, you go to these areas where, especially in Jabak in Georgia, which is magnificent, uh, I've completely fell in love with it. Um, you think that most of the people, you think, you look at their lifestyles, you think, hmm, must, you know, no education. No, most of these people have a university education. And um, it's fascinating. Thank you. Well, um, of course, your, uh, Marlene, your documentary is in competition and it's nominated, but we have a special certificate we'd like to present to Yuri for his film. And uh, on, on behalf of the ARPA International, Festival. We'd like to uh, honor you with a certificate of participation. And let me, I'll get right between you so we can make this a nice photo opportunity. And so we present this to you. Thank you so much for participating in our festival. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you for being here.